Hey everyone, it's time for Good Week Israel, where we'll give you ILTV's latest positive highlights. Get ready to smile because coming up, researchers at Northern Israeli Institute say they're just weeks away from a vaccine for coronavirus. An Israeli actress has just been cast as the star of an upcoming Netflix series. And finally, you won't believe your eyes. A brand new species has just been discovered by accident. And get this, it doesn't breathe oxygen. So stay tuned for more. Nearly 3,000 people have now died of coronavirus, with another 82,000 infected. So Israel isn't only on the defensive when it comes to dealing with the spread of this disease. In fact, Israeli researchers say they may even have a vaccine ready within the next few weeks. A vaccine for the deadly and novel coronavirus. It seems so far away, yet one may be available within just the next 90 days, thanks to researchers at the Israeli Migal Galilee Research Institute. According to a press release from Israeli Science and Technology Minister of Ophir Akunis, Israeli scientists at Migal have formulated the vaccine based on their research for a vaccine against the infectious bronchitis. And if all goes as planned, the finished coronavirus vaccine would be available in every marketplace worldwide soon after. But wait! There's more. Israeli biomed firm Batam Advanced says it's developed an all-new coronavirus diagnostic kit that gives results in as little as 25 minutes. And after testing the kit across several labs and hospitals, Batam says it will begin production ASAP from its Rome facilities. Meanwhile, Israeli government and health authorities are again calling on the nation to exercise extreme caution with respect to the virus's spread. Prime Minister Netanyahu is reminding citizens that anyone with any signs of the virus should call health services immediately immediately for advice, and Israeli hospital staff are likewise participating in a new Inonation social project where they're giving advice to coronavirus patients from all around the world. Now this is huge news for Israel's LGBTQ plus community. Israel has just struck down a law that prohibits single men and gay couples from using surrogacy to have children within the country. The High Court of Justice says that the current laws violate the equal right to parenthood that all Israelis should have, and a pathway needs to be paved for the future of their families. Today, same-sex couples who want to start a family in Israel face major barriers. Until now, it's been illegal for them to go through the process of surrogacy within Israel, meaning they often have to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on the procedure abroad. Current Israeli law only allows surrogacy for heterosexual couples or single women who are unable to have a child. But now that's all about to change. The Israeli High Court has struck down a law that blocks single men and gay couples from using surrogacy to have kids in Israel, meaning that the Knesset has a year to pass a new law. Past attempts to expand access to surrogacy in Israel to the LGBTQ community have faced vehement opposition from ultra-Orthodox political parties. Back in October of 2018, the Knesset voted 49-41 to 41 to reject a bill extending surrogacy laws to same-sex couples. Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu ended up voting against the bill himself, saying that he supports surrogacy for the LGBTQ community, but that there isn't a majority in the coalition to pass. While LGBTQ rights groups in Israel are celebrating this latest move forward towards allowing the gay community to start their own families from within Israel. Israeli Justice Minister Amil Ohana, who is an openly gay member of the Likud party, says he'll do everything in his power to ensure that a law is passed to allow everyone in Israel the freedom to have a family. Today, gay couples in Israel can only adopt children from very specific nations that have deals with Israel, or pay for surrogacy processes abroad that cost tens of thousands of dollars and require extensive travel. Do humans have the right to play God? Today, medical advances have made it so that doctors can control and prevent issues like genetic disease. But how much should we really be able to control? ILTV's Natasha Kirchuk had the chance to spend a day with an Israeli teenager battling cystic fibrosis and hear his take on the issue. If you could have had the choice to be born without cystic fibrosis, if somebody could say, hey, Amika, you would be you, but you just wouldn't have this disease, how would you answer that? Yeah, it's a good question. Uh, again, you know, so uh, I am who I am and I can't really change that and that is what has brought me to where I am. So would I want to change it? This is Amichai. He's 17 years old and has cystic fibrosis. Like every other teen, he hangs out with his friends, plays computer games and does his homework. Except he has to go to the hospital every month and do treatments at home so he can breathe. 
Most of my friends don't have cystic fibrosis. Quite often I need to uh, explain to them what, uh, what it means. I'm not like all you guys. Uh, I need to do things a bit different. Cystic fibrosis is a hereditary disease that affects the lungs and digestive system, producing thick mucus that can clog the lungs and obstruct the pancreas. There is no cure for the life-shortening disease, and it affects 70,000 people around the world. Down here, you're gonna have all the meals that I prepared for the week. I take a Thursday, and I, uh, you know, make all my meals um, in advance. I enjoy cooking a bit, uh, yeah, so, this is basically my floor. Ladies, this is the only 17-year-old that you know who cooks for himself. He can cook for you, <laughs> right? Cystic fibrosis takes a lot of time. Um, well, the only reason why I get up at 5 o'clock to do a training is because I need to do my uh, treatments. And such a treatment is about twice a day. So all together, it's at least three hours of just maintaining what you got. Cystic fibrosis it is genetic, which means there is now medical technology that can prevent babies from being born with it in the first place. Thing is, Amichai was the firstborn child in his family, and when he was diagnosed with cystic fibrosis at seven months, his parents had no idea what the disease even was. After we had Amichai, we learned that each and every child that we would have has a 25% chance of having cystic fibrosis. Correct. Yeah, that's a very high percentage. Yes. We didn't we didn't do genetic testing. I'm just stupid basically, but that would have made our lives more complicated cuz okay, so then we would have known we both had the gene for CF. So what? So we're not going to get married? In the past, couples who were predisposed to having children with genetic diseases may not have pursued a future together. But today, there's a way to avoid having ill children. Women can go through the process of in vitro fertilization, or IVF, which allows doctors to harvest their eggs, fertilize them, and then implant them. But before implementation, the embryos can be scanned for genetic disease so that only the healthy ones are actually selected. The method is called pre-implementation genetic diagnosis, or PGD, and much of the medical community raves about its potential to impact the future of the world. If, if people with, who are carriers of genetic diseases will go through IVF and will have healthy kids, then of course it's cost effective for the country because the, the national insurance will not have to, to grow very ill, very sick children. And that's the best preventive medicine. Today, about 30% of the people who choose to go through IVF here in Israel do it specifically because they need to undergo PGD so that they can ensure that they'll become pregnant with babies that don't have a genetic disease. Over 30% of these individuals are Orthodox Jews who must first get permission from their rabbis to go through with the process. But many ethical questions arise. Do humans have the right to determine who should be born and who shouldn't? Judaism is not against playing God. We were created by God's image and we should improve this world. Maybe all the rabbis will say that if you want to eliminate genetic disease, you are permitted to use this PGD in order to bring healthy children to the world. There is place in this earth to every kind of person that there is sick or not is gene diseases or not. But that doesn't say that we shouldn't try to make this world better and healthier and happier. Right so, now we're going to the hospital because you have to do this tre yeah. treatment mm -hmm. once a month. We've just been in the hospital for three hours. <laughs> He's prepared. <laughs> Who am I? But do you feel bad right now? Do I feel bad? Yeah, there is a bit of difficulty breathing. Not specific this moment, but it changes from time to time. There are better times and there are a lot worse. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> Today we may be specifically using medical technology to select embryos that will become healthy children. But tomorrow, are we going to be controlling for things like gender or eye color? Where does it stop? There are couples that, you know, really are very obsessive to have girls or boys. And then there is a special committee in Israel that approves or say no. More than 90% of the couples actually got the answer no. It's a civil committee. What we're considering there is not religious reasons. It's ethical 
reasons that we decided as a society in Israel, you don't want to enhance the discrimination between female and male. But I can't help but wonder how Amichai Italiander's family feels about how science could have changed their own lives. Even though Amichai is living a full life and is participating in everything uh, you know that life has to offer, I would not want to bring another child into this world with that extra luggage. Kids here in Israel go to the army and often and when they come out they're usually much stronger, more mature, better prepared for the future and so on and so forth. And then the question is raised, does that mean that the army is a good thing? Mm. Don't we rather not want to have an army? Mm. I don't believe so. I'd rather have an Israel that doesn't need an army and so too for cystic fibrosis. I, I do have a different opinion. <laughs> cystic fibrosis it doesn't make him who he is but it does, I think it has made him more determined, more focused, and he, yeah, he's amazing. Would you choose to have a baby without cystic fibrosis? Everyone has his own pickle in life, you know. If it's not cystic fibrosis, it may be depression or divorce or anything else. So you just let him do his thing up there. <laughs> Moving on, Israeli education is on the honor roll again this year, as several Israeli university departments are now listed among the top 100 in their fields worldwide. The 10th annual edition of the QS World University Rankings is out, and seven Israeli university departments have made the list, meaning that they rank in the top 100 departments around the globe in their field. The QS rankings primarily look at academic reputation, employer reputation, citations per paper, and research productivity. So who made the list? Well, 86 programs in eight Israeli institutions were under the microscope. And leading the Israeli rankers, we have the Hebrew University of Jerusalem, with four different programs making the index. The Theology, Divinity, and Religious Studies Department, the Ancient History Department, the Communications and Media Studies Department, and the Philosophy Program. Then Tel Aviv University's Archaeology Program, the Weizmann Institute's Biological Sciences Program, and Technion Institute's Math Department follow. Now despite the great turnout though, Israeli universities declined in the listing overall. In fact, since 2016, the total number of Israeli universities on the list halved in number, from 0.2% of the listing to 0.1%. An Israeli actress has just been cast as the star of an upcoming Netflix series, and you're going to want to watch this. Imagine being born into an ultra-Orthodox Jewish family in Brooklyn, New York, and being forced into an arranged marriage as a teenager that you just didn't want. Would you have the strength to get out and leave your community, the only community you've ever known? Well, that's exactly the role that Israeli actress Shira Haas is going to be playing in an upcoming Netflix series about a woman who leaves her New York Hasidic upbringing to pursue a secular life in Berlin. The show is called Unorthodox and is largely based on the memoir of Deborah Feldman, a woman who went through just that. Shira Haas is known for her roles in The Zookeeper's Wife and the series Steisel, and the production of the latest show is apparently already underway in Berlin. The cast is also set to include another Israeli actor, Amit Rachav, and Jeff Wilbush, who is a German-Israeli actor who grew up in the ultra-Orthodox community. And get this, the show will apparently be in both Yiddish and English. Unorthodox is expected to hit Netflix sometime in 2020. Now this is absolutely amazing. An Israeli researcher has just identified in the Galilee caves where Jews fought the Romans almost 2,000 years ago. 2,000 years ago, one brave man left Jerusalem behind to make his way to the northern Galilee, where he would lead the Jews of the region in their rebellion against Rome. But this brave commander was captured by the Romans just a few months later, eventually becoming a Roman citizen and becoming the author of some of the most important Jewish works in history. Today, the world knows this man as Josephus Flavius, and thanks to his writings, Israeli researcher Dr. Yunon Shivtiel has been able to identify the very sites in which he fought for the Jewish people to two millennia ago. After visiting various archaeological sites identified in the Great Revolt like Tiberias, Arbel, and Mero, Dr. Shiftiel noticed that they were all close to steep cliffs and natural caves. And that's when he began to visit them by climbing and rope descent. And what he found was unbelievable. A multitude of ancient coins, jars, lamps, and arrows dating back to the first century. That, he says, is how he realized they were indeed the caves described by Josephus. Overall, Dr. Shivtiel says he's identified over 900 caves and 75 hiding complexes, but he says he's still searching for more. 
right, now here's a bizarre story. Israeli researchers have made an accidental discovery that's completely shaking how scientists view the animal world. They've just discovered a creature that doesn't need oxygen to breathe. This tiny salmon parasite called the Henaguya salminicola is a relative of the jellyfish and corals. But unlike its cousins, it apparently gave up breathing oxygen to be able to produce more energy. So why is this so groundbreaking? Well, until now, breathing oxygen has been considered something that every animal and human on Earth does. But this discovery shows that evolution can go in a very strange direction. According to the researchers from Tel Aviv University's School of Zoology, it's generally thought that organisms become more complex during evolution. But this animal has evolved in the opposite way. It has actually shed unnecessary genes responsible for breathing oxygen because of how much energy it consumes in doing so. So therefore, this Israeli team is showing that this organism actually became simpler over time. Talk about a bizarre find. Now, you may want to think twice before you pour yourself that next glass of milk. An Israeli scientist claims he has found tiny pieces of plastic in three different kinds of milk, and experts are concerned about the long-term implications on your health. Microplastics are tiny plastic particles that are less than five millimeters long, and they usually form when plastic waste is washed into oceans and rivers and begins to break down. But today, they found their way into almost every ecosystem on Earth, including the products that we consume like salt, fish, and beer. And they're so hard to see, actually, that they could even be in the air that we breathe. Now, Israeli Dr. Noam Vanderhal from the University of Haifa has found that three different brands of milk in Israel sold in totally different packaging also contain microplastics. And he even visited a dairy farm and took samples from one of the large tanks where the milk is held before being distributed to buyers. Still, Dr. Vanderhal suspects that the bottling process is the main source of contamination since the milk tested after having been packaged contained more microplastic particles. So what does this mean for our health? Should we stop drinking milk? Today, there haven't been any findings showing that consuming microplastics directly harms human health, but the damaging impact on marine organisms is becoming more apparent. And the research around microplastics is alarming. A recent study has revealed that each Israeli consumes around 2,000 pieces of microplastic each year, and the question now is what the world needs to do about it. Now, in other news, in spite of fears of coronavirus and the closing of Israel's borders, 40,000 people still flooded into Tel Aviv for the annual Tel Aviv Marathon. But that's not the only major marathon news coming from the Jewish state. With nearly a full minute lead over second place, Israeli runner Lona Chemtai Salpeter has just taken first at the annual Tokyo Marathon on Sunday. And while she was at it, she set a new women's record for the course at just 2 hours 17 minutes too. But that's not all. Salpeter's time in Japan also breaks the Israeli national record, which Salpeter also set, by over two minutes, making hers the eighth best women's marathon time in history. So what does this mean? Well, with this latest gold medal, the Kenyan-born Salpeter is guaranteed a spot back in Japan in July at the 2020 Olympic Summer Games. The southern city of Eilat is Israel's gorgeous window to the Red Sea, and it's one of the most popular tourist destinations in the country for Israelis. It's time for YVT's Beautiful Faces of Israel segment, produced by the incredible Inon El Natan. We're headed to Eilat. Take a look. This time, we are in Eilat, the resort town of Israel located in the south of the country on the Red Sea coast. Eilat offers a variety of entertainment attractions and hotels, and we're going to recommend you the best. Elat is blessed with the most amazing and unique coral reef in the world, with an underwater marine observatory situated in the heart of the reef. The park offers its visitors a rare opportunity to enter the natural and abundant marine kingdom of the Red Sea, an unforgettable experience for both young and old. If you want to dive deeper into the depths of the Red Sea with the diving club, Marina Divers, known for the amazing professionalism and experience of diving in the Red Sea. For diving enthusiasts, we recommend a very suitable hotel. 
Blue Hotel Elant, the signature hotel of the Reef Diving Group, offers a unique, homely atmosphere that appeals to anyone searching for a reasonably priced, good sleeping accommodation. The Blue Hotel is especially aimed at scuba divers, surfers, water sports enthusiasts, cyclists, and anyone seeking a pleasant atmosphere and in an inexpensive inn to rest for the night. Elat also offers a varied culinary experience. We chose to recommend the best. The first is the small Brazil restaurant located in the residential area of Elat and offers a special local atmosphere that combines real Brazilian entertainment and a culinary experience of meats. recommend Caesar Quality Hotel, a is suitable for families. Another hotel we would recommend is the Orchidaha Hotel, located on a mountain facing the sea and designed like a Thai village. Another recommendation for a hotel is the Reef Hotel, located on the beach which offers a unique atmosphere of freedom. That's all for today's Good Week Israel. Hope we've helped you start your week with a smile. I'm Nittany Manson, and see you next week.